I'm uh, David Dominic Fowler, or Dave, as people call me, which is fine. Um, and I play guitar and sing, oh, and a little bit of keyboards in uh, the Australian Pink Floyd show. And here we are in Oberhausen Arena. So how many people are you playing to tonight? I think it's about five, five and a half, six thousand. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the thousands. It's well above four and probably under seven. I was going to introduce you to some of my guitars. Cool, let's have a look then. What we got? Right, this is the one that I use for the majority of the songs uh, this year. It's the first year I've used it, but I got it a couple of years ago. This is a 1972 Fender Stratocaster. It's all original, except I believe the varnish was taken off. It's now matte, whether it had any paint or whatever, I'm not absolutely certain. That's been changed, but other than that, it is a 1972, it's got the original pickups, the original neck, all the original frets and machine heads and everything, and it just sounds absolutely beautiful. You can get some really good harmonics. I could give you a very, very quick demo. Hang on, we'll get to this one in a minute. So if I get a really big sound, get some really good harmonic content out of it and it, it works beautiful with the rig and the pedals which I'll show you in a bit. This is my main beast for the show. So do you choose that because you like it or because it's what you would have used or...? Uh, no, well basically, uh, I, before that my main guitar was a 1973 Fender Strat, but I had um, Seymour Duncan SSL4 pickups in it, which you can look up, but gives quite a fat sound to it and they're a bit more sort of modern pickups. Um, this one was in for various repairs that uh, needed doing, and I'd, so I'd never used it. I bought it slightly broken, it needed a bit of work done on it, so I got it cheap and I put it in for repairs and never used it. And then end of last year, when I was going through the songs for this year, I was going through all my guitars thinking which one's best. And every time I tried that one, it was just, well, that one sounds the best for that, that one sounds the best for that. And in the end, it was like, man, I can do this whole gig on, on one guitar, pretty much. I mean, there are, limita there are differences. So this one here is the one I take out as a spare. A, if I break a string, it's useful. And also this has got Seymour Duncan classic stack pickups in it, which look pretty similar, but they're noiseless. So if you have electrical hum or whatever, it completely cancels out. And I've got the tone pots wired so that you can actually roll the neck and the bridge pickup um, between humbucker and single coil. So I can dial in some of that top end. To me, this lacks dynamics. If I pick softly or I pick hard, it tends to just come out the same. So. Uh, the feel of the guitar is beautiful. A friend of mine, Matt Lambert, actually made this for me um, from scratch. He's a master carpenter. That, he can. That neck is gorgeous. He, he, yeah, he he made this for me from scratch, carved it all out. But just because of the choice of pickups, which are there for a reason, this is now not my main guitar. I did use it as my main guitar for a while, but I felt that it took some of the dynamics out of my playing. So this kind of sits there as a just in case spare if I break a string or something like that. Um, I'm going to skip the Les Paul for a moment. This one, same year as my main Strat, this is a 1972 Fender Telecaster Custom, which has the humbucker in the neck and the single coil in the bridge. Um, all original, uh, and it just sounds amazing. I'll plug it in and show you. So the, the opening song we're doing tonight is Astronomy Donomy, which is a, an early Floyd number, and you get that. <coughs> It's got that sort of slightly country. And then the neck pickup has that kind of sort of bluesier kind of feel to it. But this is an absolutely stunning guitar with that real cutting. I fell in love with it. I wanted one of these and I went in and I tried one of the reissue ones and put it up against this and it was about 
about 1,500 pounds more for the original, but it was so much better that I couldn't say no. This one is a 76. Now this is, obviously you can't tell weight on camera, but <laughs> this is, um, I don't know why I tried to drop it, because anyone who knows anything about physics knows things will drop at the same rate, whatever the weight, but anyway. Um, <laughs> it's heavy, and because of that, it soaks up a lot of the low end frequencies which means when I'm doing a song like Run Like Hell, if you know any Pink Floyd songs, it really has that real cutting. So let's go. So that's the only song I use this on. I tried to get the 72 Telecaster to sound like this, and I could dial out some of the bottom end, and it kind of sounded all right, and then I'd play this one, and it just sounded perfect. And I thought, um, well, Andres has to put them out and put them away and everything, so I'll just bring more guitars. <laughs> it's not my problem. <laughs> that sounds so arrogant. I don't mean that. I love Andres to bits. Um, the Les Paul is used on one song and one song only. It has P90 pickups, which are not humbuckers, but they're kind of big, fat, single coils. Um, and I use this for another Brick in the Wall part two. So if I go to the neck pickup of this and play the solo, you should get something which sounds like the original. On the rhythm sound to try and make it sound more like a strat if I put both the pickups on I've got some interesting things in the rig that which give it more of a brittle so I get that I promise you I play it a lot better in the show <laughs> but, um, so did, did Gilmore use a strat on the original? As far as I know, he used a strat for the rhythm parts, but the actual solo, the main, the famous... <laughs> ...is actually a Les Paul. And to quote Spinal, Spinal Tap, it's, um, it's got loads of sustain, you know, you could hit a note and go away, so I can do that. <laughs> or you can go away and get a bite and that one's still going. <laughs> Tell me about your pedals then, what's going on with your Right, pedals? so let's, let's go through the, uh, the rack of pedals. So the guitar goes into a wah pedal, which is quite a standard thing. Let me find a very neutral sound. So that's a wah pedal, which is one of the most sort of famous pedals in the world, which effectively boosts a set of frequencies and moves which frequencies it boosts up and down. So after that, it splits and goes into a tuner. I've got this thing called a polytune there, which will give me all my notes, but if I strum all the strings, it'll actually give me readings for everything at the bottom of me is not working so well. So it will tell me my G string there is slightly flat. So I can strum all the strings and it will give me a reading on all of them very quickly, which is quite useful. Then after that, it goes out of this box marked very nicely with Dave's dodgy splits, because it splits between the tuner and my rack, and comes into here, which is, well, basically, it's, a, it's what's called a loop switcher. So every pedal I have in the trays, uh, all the different pedals. Oh, I see, okay, so, so all the pedals are in trays. It, and then uh, these can turn on and off and push them in and out of the sequence. Ah. So some of them you won't be able to see, but I have an old MXR Dynacomp compressor pedal, I have a Boss CS2 compressor pedal. I have a Color Sound Power Boost. So if I was to run through some of these and show you what they sound like, if I turn a bit of level up. So this is just a straight amp sound. There's nothing special there. The Dynacomp compresses so Without that, it's just a bit. 
is subtle, but it, it just gives it lift. So even like tiny little things come out quite. So when you're doing those things in another brick in the wall, you're going to. You get. So you get that kind of sound. And the boss one is like a more subtle version of that. So it's there, but it's not quite as much. The Colour Sound Power Boost is a treble boost, which makes things really. Um, so for like time, if I was doing, uh, with the without the echoes and stuff on it, it's it's good for that. Um, the CP9 is actually not in the rack anymore, so you can ignore that. Now the P2 is probably one of the best pedals in the rack. This is made by a guy called Pete Cornish, which if I really pull it out and dry it there, you'll just about see the Pete Cornish label. So there you go. Pete Cornish is a, a legendary guitar pedal maker who made pedals for David Gilmore. Um, I think he's made some stuff for Brian May and uh, so many people. I mean, the, the list is endless. You go to his website and look it up. It's just lists of artists. I'm lucky to have an, a few of his pedals, some of which are at home. But this one here is the P2, which is the same overdrive or distortion or fuzz or whatever you want to call it. It's a fuzz, really that um, David Gilmore used on a lot of the kind of 80s and 90s Floyd stuff. So if you put that in combination with one of the compressors, let's say the Dynacomp, you can get a real... you get quite a characterful sound. After that, I've got a blues driver, which is a real subtle overdrive. So if I was doing like an all along the watchtower type. Well, that's not all along the watchtower. Oh, it is, sort of. But if I wanted to do that kind of Hendrixy type. But I use that for things like Shine On there. If I actually go to the real sound I use for it, you'll hear it, it's like a. So that kind of thing, that's the blues driver. And then I've got an HT Boost by Blackstar, which is a valve boost pedal, which I am using that as a treble boost, but it's not as harsh as the old colour sound, the vintage colour sound. So it's just a little bit brighter. And then one of my favourite pedals is the Marshall Governor, which uh, sounds like this. It's just... It's just got a good old fashioned crunch rock and roll. So when I'm doing from dark side, I'm doing a any colour you like solo. Um, with a rotary simulator, I'm actually using that to do the kind of like the So that's that's I'm using that in there and some of the rhythm sounds and whatever. That's pretty much all the pedals that I'm using in there now. Then it goes to this Boss Multi-Effects, which is a bit of a Swiss Army knife. It gives me delays, choruses. Um, for those that don't know what delay is, it's like a, an echo on something. So it's like, and it repeats, so. Which one? So it kind of repeats the note and gives it some echo. And so all, all of that gets done by the Boss. And then it goes to this beautiful Fender Twin, which is an original 1973 Silverface Fender Twin reverb amp, which I'm using the first channel of. It's a very simple setup, everything on five. This on five here. Oh, I just nudged that, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> and this one here I've got on six, and I don't know why. Uh, none of it goes to 11, it all goes to 10, but I'm quite happy with five and six, which, uh, if you add them though, um, there's some kind of conspiracy theory about that. So if you add five, five, five and five, you get 20 and you add six and it comes to 26. And then if you halve that, it goes to 13. And then if you take off two, because I've got two strats, it goes to 11. 
So there we go, there's the maths behind that. So I'm just being silly now. And then finally, this gets mic'd up with this mic here because we want the sound that's actually coming out the amp, not what's going into it. That goes to a Joe Meek mic preamp, which I have in the back of the rack, which goes into this channel here on the line six. I also have the channel direct from the boss multi effects going into there, should I want to use the line six for any amp simulation or anything like that. And I also have an acoustic guitar and the keyboard plugged into two other inputs on the back. So as I select the channel, the pedals on here, it will change which pedals I use, what combination of things, it will mix different things together. And then all the front of house and the monitor guys get is a left and right feed. So they just get two channels out. I'll give you an example of how this would work. So for example, in learning to fly, I've got my rhythm sound, which has a delay on it. So I'm gonna be like. But at the end, I don't want the delay because I just want it to end. Boom, boom. So I use this second pedal and I pull that down and the delay goes and I go. And there's no delay. On another brick in the wall, um, the rhythm sound, let's say. I've got... Um, and then if I pull this back, it turns the volume up very slightly. You can't really hear it's subtle, but if I go like... Then I go... Just so for that little bit, it's just a little bit louder, it lifts. The same would be true with astronomy. So if I'm doing like... Um, I can lift my sound, that's my overall master volume, and then this lifts the sound in between. Uh, but it can do some other weird and wacky things, like on Shine On, we like. And then if I push that up, I suddenly get this slap back. So it adds in this kind of slap back echo. Um, for one of these days, because I do a little bit with Steve, um, on, where he's playing slide so he can move and I can't do that. So I've actually got a pitch shifter. So I can go. So that's basically pretending I've got a slide so I could go like... Um, Hang on a bit. So I'm sort of, <laughs> I've messed that up at the beginning because I've never done that before. But yeah, you can uh, use that as a kind of a pseudo slide. And so for a lot of the song, I'm just playing rhythm because he's doing the slide. I'm just sort of going. And then I go. That's my master volume, but that will just bring in other effects and do bits and pieces like that. And that's, uh, that's how it all works, really. <laughs>